this budget briefing of the Department of Finance and its uh, attached agencies uh, to order. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge our senators present, uh, led by our vice chair, Senator Amy Marcos, as well as uh, Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, of course, we'd like to acknowledge the secretary of the Department of Finance, uh, Secretary Carlos Sani Dominguez. Good afternoon, sir. Yusek Hill Beltran. Uh, the heads of our attached agencies, the Bureau of Customs, Commissioner Guerrero, the Bureau of Internal Revenue, Commissioner Cesar Dulay, the Bureau of Local Government Finance, Executive Director Alvina, Deputy Executive Director Tan, Bureau of the Treasury, Treasurer De Leon, Deputy Treasurer Marino, the Insurance Commission, Deputy Commissioner Erickson Balmes, the National Tax Research Center, Executive Director Lucero Calubag, OIC De Deputy Executive Director Empilio, Securities and Exchange Commission, Commissioner Carlo Bello, Phil Guarantee, Senior Vice President Medina, Privatization and Management Office, Chief Privatization Officer Gerard Chan, Philippine Deposit Insurance Commission, Senior Vice President Sandra Diaz, and Land Bank of the Philippines President Cecilia Borromea, Borromeo. And of course, we'd like to, I now see her on screen also, is our uh, Vice Chair, Senator Cynthia Villar. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, Comsec, did I fail to acknowledge anybody? Though that was the list I was given. Uh, you have acknowledged, sir, all the resource persons present, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll ask our senators if uh, anyone wants to make any opening statements. If not, we can. Uh, we'd, we'd like to go straight to the budget presentations. Uh, Secretary Sani, you have the floor. Our order, by the way, uh, of questioning after the agencies is. Uh, Vice Chair Marcos, Vice Chair Villar, and then Senator Nancy Binay. Go ahead, uh, Secretary Sani. Again, good afternoon, sir. And to the DOF family, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Senate Finance Committee Chairman uh, Sani Angara, Senators Amy Marcos, uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Nancy Binay, fellow workers in government, good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to brief the Senate on the proposed 2022 budget of the Department of Finance. First of all, let me emphasize the role and importance of the DOF. This department performs multiple essential functions in, this, in successful governance and the sustained inclusive growth of our economy. If the DOSF does its job well, the government will be able to keep its deficit and debt obligations within manageable levels and will be assured of adequate funding for the government to smoothly run its affairs. If ample financing is secured, the government can make strategic economic investments in and for the people. In turn, these will help maintain a strong financial sector and ensure robust public spending for social services and infrastructure. During the normal years, the DOF accomplished much in consolidating our growth and realizing better economic outcomes for the Filipino people. But the pandemic changed the game completely. It overturned economic plans and threw all countries into disarray. Fortunately, we were financially ready when the contagion hit us. Amidst the ongoing global health crisis, we managed to maintain our solid financial footing. This confirms the correctness of the reforms and the policies pursued by this department since the beginning of President Duterte's term. This validates the good work that the DOF has been doing for the nation. Before I discuss our spending performance and proposed budget for 2022, allow me to quickly go through the highlights of our accomplishments over the past five years. The DOF pushed for the modernization of our tax policies, and we thank the Congress again for passing our tax reform packages that provided us a reliable revenue flow and strong financial position. We are the only administration in Philippine history that dramatically reduced income tax rates twice in a single presidential term. The train law lowered the personal income tax rates for 99% of our workers. This was followed by the CREATE law, which provides 
hefty reductions in the corporate income tax rates for our micro, small, and medium enterprises and the rest of the corporations. This underscores our position that the Duterte administration is pro-business and pro-people. We are also the only administration that increased excise taxes on sin products three times. This highlights what strong political will can do to protect our people from consuming products that have a negative impact on their health. Apart from the bold tax reforms, the DOF pursued aggressive tax enforcement campaigns that led to historic accomplishments. It was only during this administration that the domestic cigarette industry was cleaned up. We led a sustained drive to crack down on POGOs and their service providers that evade proper taxation. We destroyed illicit cigarette products and machines, as well as luxury vehicles to demonstrate our strong resolve to fight against smuggling to the very end. It was only during this administration that the government was able to start implementing a full-fledged fuel marking program nationwide to curb oil smuggling. Our revenue agencies are well on their way to their full digital transformation. This is a major step for, towards aligning our process and standards with the best customs and revenue services around the world. Meanwhile, our exemplary financial and debt management brought the country to its historic low debt to GDP ratio and the highest ever revenue effort. As a result, we received our highest credit ratings ever, and these have been maintained amid the wave of downgrades globally. These allowed us easy access to concessional financing when we negotiated international funding for our Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. This record of fiscal discipline enabled us to quickly access emergency financing from our development partners and the international capital markets for our COVID-19 response. We immediately negotiated the financing and procurement of vaccines and secured 171 million doses that can inoculate 100% of our adult population by the end of this year if the pharmaceutical companies deliver them as contracted. We worked hard to raise revenues for the national effort to defeat the pandemic and for the funding of our economic investments. We work closely with Congress to come up with fiscally responsible economic stimulus packages. We have fine-tuned our fiscal and monetary policies to enable our banks and government financial institutions to assist the pandemic hit sectors, especially the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Our interventions to save lives and rescue the economy have been both prompt and effective. Although our deficit and debt ratios expanded as a result of our unplanned spending needed for the pandemic response, we assure you that these are still within the prescribed bounds of fiscal viability. The increases are just temporary and we will return quickly to fiscal consolidation. We have been exercising maximum fiscal responsibility to ensure we do not shift the burden of repayment to future generations of Filipinos. We will continue to work with Congress to pass our economic priority bills and to fight the pandemic sustainably by keeping our deficit and debt ratios within reasonable levels. This will allow us to leave our finances in great shape for the next generation. Now let me make a quick rundown on the spending performance of the DOF over the last five years. The yearly decrease in our budget and a high budget utilization rate from 2016 to 2020 show that there is no wasteful spending in the fulfillment of DOF's mandate. From 2016 to 2020, the DOF had a total approved budget of 95 billion pesos under the general appropriations. We obligated 86% of our total allotments and distributed disbursed 80% of our total obligations. 
the 14% unobligated allotments were savings from the procurement from or bidding activities for our operational expenses and capital outlays. Meanwhile, the 20% undisbursed obligations were largely payments for big ticket contracts under deferred or progress billing terms, which typically cross over to the succeeding fiscal year. Over the past five years, we have done, demonstrated the DOF's effort in efficiently managing its resources towards necessary and essential expenditures. For 2021, our approved budget under the General Appropriations Act amounted to 16 billion pesos. As of the end of July of this year, we've obligated 58% of our allotments and disbursed 79% of our total obligations. On the average, our obligation rate is on track and our disbursement rate is relatively high for the period. Allow me now to brief you on DIF's proposed 2022 budget. The department's proposed budget for next year totals 23.2 billion pesos. This includes automatic, unprogrammed, and new general appropriations, as well as budgetary support to the Philippine Tax Academy. The automatic appropriations amount to about to 1.6 billion pesos. These are composed of the retirement and life insurance premium and special accounts in the general fund. The unprogrammed appropriations amount to 210 million pesos for the refund of the service development fee for the government's Nampedai property in Japan. Since 2012, it has been allotted in the budget of the DOF with its utilization contingent on the finalization of the case. A total of 95 million pesos is allo allocated for the implementation of the Special Tax Training and Education Management Program of the Philippine Tax Academy. For 2022 General Appropriations Act, the DOF's proposed budget increased by 32.7% to 21.2 billion pesos compared to this year's appropriation. However, if we compare the proposed 2022 new appropriations to our 2017 budget level, the amount is even 1% lower. The increase in next year's funding will be spent for our modernization and digitalization programs to enhance our revenue enforcement capacity. These programs will allow us to effectively raise more funds to finance our pandemic response and economic recovery program. The growth in next year's budget is also due to the implementation of the corresponding salary adjustments for public service employees under the salary standardization law. Overall, the Bureau of Treasury's budget has the highest growth rate because a major portion of that will be for national government operations and not for the agency itself. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Internal Revenue continues to have the largest budget allocation among the DOF attached agencies. I will now proceed to a more detailed presentation per agency. We have allocated 10.9 billion pesos for the BIR next year to further improve its tax administration capacity. The proposed budget is 9% more than the 2021 level. The 13% rise in personal services is due to the mandated salary adjustments and an increase in the filled up positions from 12,449 in 2021 to 13,341 241 in 2022. 21% growth in financial expenses is due to the interest expense and financing charges for the lease purchase agreement between BIR and the Land Bank of the Philippines to provide our regional BIR offices with their own buildings to better serve the public. The Bureau of Customs budget, on the other hand, will increase by 69% compared to this year's budget to bolster its modernization and digitalization efforts. The capital outlays will grow 21 times from last year's budget, mainly due to the rollout of the Philippine Customs Modernization Project, which costs 1.58 billion pesos. 
supported by the World Bank. The project aims to transform the BOC into a world-class agency by streamlining its di and digitalizing its systems and processes. This project is expected to be partially operational by 2023. The full operation is scheduled on 2024. The 20% growth in BOC's personal services, meanwhile, is meant to improve its enforcement capability. Apart from the mandated adjustment of salaries under the salary standardization law, the number of filled up personnel positions will increase from 2,892 in 2021 to 3,444 in 2022. The Bureau of the Treasury has the biggest percent increase in next year's budget at 96% or 4.2 billion. The bulk of the increase or about 74% is for the national government operations. Only 26% of the proposed budget is for the BTR's regular operations. For instance, the BTR's capital outlays grew five times from this year's budget, mainly due to the national government's payment for the International Commitments Fund worth 1.35 billion pesos. These are membership quota subscriptions or equity contributions to multilateral institutions. Our membership in different multilateral institutions gives us access to concessional financing and technical expertise to support key projects and programs of the government. Our membership also gives the Philippines a voice in these institutions by allowing us to vote on the policies and plans of action that they will undertake. Our equity contributions are pulled together with the contributions of other member countries to fund projects and programs supported by these multilateral banks. In essence, the Philippines is both a contributor and a beneficiary of its equity investments in these multilateral institutions. Meanwhile, the BTR's MOOE, or maintenance and, oper and other operating expenses, increased by 16% due to incurred expenses on the transfer of some assets to the national government as a result of court decisions and borrower defaults. These expenses include appraisal services, insurance of government properties and other general services and taxes. The office of the secretary was allotted 1.1 billion pesos, a 30% increase from its budget level this year. Our MOOE increased by 19% from 2021 level, primarily due to the operating requirements for projects under the medium term information and communication technology harmonization initiative. These include the digital Philippine national single window, which allows for the automation and streamlining of trade processes among the different government agencies. The capital outlays increased by almost eight times, largely due to building renovations, specifically for the Philippine Tax Academy Office, an essential institution that trains all our revenue agencies to improve their competitiveness and expertise. This includes the training of municipal treasurers and provincial treasurers. The remaining five DOF attached agencies have a total proposed budget of 723.2 million pesos or around 3% of the total DOF budget. The increase in their appropriations are mainly due to ICT infrastructure upgrades to support the ongoing modernization programs to prepare for the new economy. For instance, the privatization management office is currently setting up a comprehensive digital asset register on assets transferred or assigned to its office for privatization. This project will increase efficiency of asset disposition and generate much needed revenues to fund our pandemic response. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Local Government Finance is implementing the local governance reform project together with the Asian Development Bank. This will help boost the revenue collection capacity of our local government units by adopting new digital tools and bolstering institutional development and policy support for property valuation. 
overall, our proposed budget mirrors the current reality that we have to speed up the digital transformation of our government offices if they are to thrive in the new economy. We need to modernize governance to efficiently deliver basic services and be responsive to the needs of the Filipino people, especially during these difficult times. In closing, let me reiterate the DF's commitment to be the exemplar of prudence and fiscal discipline. We practice what we preach. We look forward to your approval of this budget submission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary Dominguez. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence uh, of one of our vice chairpersons, Senator Joel Villanueva. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. And uh, also, afternoon, sir. And uh, also acknowledge uh, additional officials who have logged in. We have the insurance uh, uh, chair, commissioner chairperson, Dennis Funa, and GSIS chief legal officer, attorney Lucio Yu Jr. Thank you very much, Secretary Dominguez. Thank you for your kind words for Congress's efforts. And uh, we've certainly been very supportive of your uh, uh, aim to modernize our tax system. And we uh, praise you for your efforts uh, and your political will, because some of these were very uh, difficult and contentious. And uh, you're not done yet. So, uh, Secretary Sani, are there any agencies who wish to present after you? Are there any presentations coming from uh, the different uh, commission, uh, commissions and bureaus? Um, I don't believe so, uh, but let me check. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no presentations. Uh, yeah. Okay. If there are none, uh, we will uh, uh, go down to our uh, members uh, who have 10 minutes each. The order of login is the basis. So uh, we'll start with, uh, before we start with uh, Vice Chairperson Amy Marcos, We'll just put the order. Uh, first is uh, Vice Chair Marcos, second is Vice Chair Villar, third is uh, Senator Binay, and fourth is uh, Vice Chairperson uh, Villanueva. So you have the floor, uh, Vice Chairperson Marcos. Uh, you have 10 minutes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, COA annual audit reports have become uh, fodder for the news. The BOC um, actually was rendered an adverse opinion in 2020. Uh, may we inquire regarding the PSDBM uh, funds, the 59 million plus, as well as the advances to the PITC, uh, also known to have been languishing there for two to six years. Um, the PITC amount is much larger, it's 2.4 billion. What are these projects? Why were they parked there? And uh, how are we intending to go forward to get rid of these uh, COA observations, please? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon, Honorable uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, first, to answer the question about the uh, funds uh, transferred to the PSTBM, uh, as per our records, we have a total of uh, 1 billion for uh, million. 617,475.47 pesos are currently uh, with the PSDBM. And uh, this is composed of uh, uh, a total of 104 uh, million, which are actually uh, projects uh, being uh, procured to the PSDBM together with some uh, payables, payables to the fuel marking program amounting to 929 million. Yes, is that General Jagger? Uh, may I know, uh, ano yung nasa PSDBM at adin yung linipat para sa PITC? Ano mga project to? Ano dapat bibilhin na di po-procure nila para sa uh, BOC? So for for the PSDBM projects, ma'am, we have a total of uh, 140 million. Uh, oh, 140 million, 690,000. Uh, these are the, the projects, ma'am, that we have uh, pending at the PSDBM. Uh, procurement of uh, 22 units sa uh, passenger van. Three units motorcycle. I see. Uh, vehicles, ma'am. Ma'am? Uh, vehicles, ma'am. Vehicles, ma ma yes, ma'am. Vehicles, ma'am. Okay. Uh, tapos yung sa, yung mas malaki, yung uh, two and a half billion na nasa PITC, para sa anya? For the PITC, ma'am, uh, it is for uh, 52 projects amounting to uh, 
2.9 billion. Actually, mama, 300 million of which was already returned to the uh, uh, Bureau of Treasury dahil hindi natuloy yung project. And the ano rest are in various stages of procurement. Procurement din ng vehicle? Uh, assorted, ma'am. Uh, police, military supplies, vehicles, firearms, motorboats, uh, cameras. It sounds like military supplies. Bakit napunta sa BOC lahat? Ma'am? Bakit sa inyo napunta yan, yung mga military and PNP supplies? Because we have a customs uh, police force, ma'am. So we procured mga police and military supplies for ah, them. For the customs police, or oh, I see. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ang tanong, kasi ang sabi dito, nasa six years halos na nasa DBM, na hindi naman ginalaw. Eh, kung uh, napakasimple lang nito, these are just vehicle procurements. Why? The funds were, ano? Yes, ma'am. The funds were actually transferred, uh, already transferred to the PSTBM and, uh, and PITC when I arrived here in the Bureau of Customs. And we are just continuing the uh, procurement through PITC and PSDBM of these uh, projects, ma'am. But given okay. that it's already been six years at nag-umpisa na magsauli ng 300 million yung PITC, anong plano ninyo para uh, maibalik yung pondo at maisaayos yung uh, libro ninyo? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Senator, uh, the projects, it's 2.9 billion projects, uh, worth of projects with the PITC, uh, was undertaken only in uh, 2019, ma'am. Sinimulan lang yun 2019. So... Hindi pa po five years, six years. Uh, I just don't know. Five years, six other. years is the PSDBM. Yun ang six years na sinight ng COA, di ba? Uh, I will check, ma'am. Uh, we, our records, ma'am, if, uh, if that is the case with the funds with the PSDBM. Do you have any idea why they were transferred, even if it's before your time, to uh, these procurement agencies? And uh, why... Uh, BOC, which undertakes its own procurement and awards and bidding processes, did not do it themselves directly. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, uh, I would just like to confirm tama po si uh, Madam Senator na five to six years yung sa PSDB. Uh, yung sa 2019, uh, Mr. Chairman, is actually yung sa PITC. As to uh, why it was uh, uh, left for five to six years sa PSDB, I, I do not have the answer, ma'am, but uh, uh, soon as I uh, assumed uh, position as a commissioner of BOC, we already undertook the submission requirements to make sure that the, the procurement with BSPSDB is, uh, is undertaken uh, expeditiously, ma'am. Oh, uh, kasi ang daming mga findings ng COA na hindi maganda, eh, kayo yata yung isa sa nagkaroon ng adverse adverse opinion, hindi yata maganda yung ganon, sana maisaayos na yan sa lalong madaling panahon. I'd like to inquire, since we have the honor of uh, Secretary Dominguez's presence, what is the opinion of the DOF on the abolition of both PSDBM as well as the PITC, given the push for right-sizing the government? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Senator uh, Marcos. Um, I have not uh, been uh, presented with a proposal for the uh, abolition of both agencies. Um, so at this point in time, I, I can't express an intelligent opinion. <laughs> However, uh, I believe it's worth uh, looking at. I think all agencies in government, all agencies should be regularly uh, reviewed for possible abolition in the same way that we do in the GCG. Uh, which is the governance, uh, what is it? Yeah, the government, the uh, the go the governance commission on GOCCs. GOCCs, yes, yeah. Paul. So I think uh, it's a good idea to yes. review all government agencies. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I uh, just filed a bill uh, abolishing both, and I was hopeful that uh, the DOF could have a look at it so that we can right size. I'm uh, aware that the uh, secretary has already um, manifested his opinion that um, he was lukewarm about all these new departments and new agencies. So uh, thank you. I will, I will take a close look at your bill, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, back to the BOC. Uh, um, Vice Chair, I mean, I think the Vice Chair Joel is just raising sorry, his hand. Joel, yes. Your sorry. permission. If I may, if I may just a very 
just a very short manifestation. Uh, yes, please. I, yes, I, I agree with uh, Senator Marcos, and uh, we have talked about this for quite some time. And just to place on record, even our COA chair, Mike Aguinaldo, already made mention that this is uh, definitely should be the way to go, considering that, for example, uh, Senator Aimi was asking a while ago about PSDBM. Uh, we raised this uh, last hearing uh, about, about, about the mandate of PSDBM. For instance, uh, the uh, management of their uh, inventory, which uh, COA also said uh, it, it, it has very weak control over uh, inventories. 31% of these uh, so-called common use items or supplies are, are actually uh, not around no? and available. Uh, this is in 2020, in all in all the uh, uh, months of 2020, ganun din po. No? So, isa po yan sa mga dapat tingnan talagang maigi dahil uh, kung hindi rin lang nagagawa yung tungkulin nila, eh, might as well uh, right size and uh, abolish uh, uh, this particular agency. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Thank you, Thank Senator Crowell. Thank you uh, for uh, Vice Chairperson. Uh, I have a question for, for Secretary Sani. Uh, Pag ganong nakapark ng matagal na five to six years as uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, do we not charge them for interest? <laughs> when they're parked at you? Four percent. Kasi no. parang dapat may financing charge na yung ganong nat natulog ng gusto eh. <laughs> di ba, di ba in, uh, that's already considered in the finance world a long-term uh, investment? <laughs> uh, Senator, uh, just to respond, uh, two things. Uh, the interest is uh, being remitted. The interest they earn is being remitted to the Treasury. Uh, okay, great. And uh, secondly, I just want to quote uh, was something that uh, President Reagan said in 1964. He said, a government agency is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see on this earth. Thank Amen. <laughs> Amen, Secretary. Yes, certainly. Um, but that's not in the Bible. Uh, Senator Joel will tell you, Secretary Zani. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry for the interruption. Go ahead, uh, Vice yeah, Chair Marcos. It's, all, it's uh, uh, we all we agree to all the manifestations of our good chairman. There's a special account in the BOC for uh, 737 million, including the Super Green Lane. Was the said Super Green Lane used for the importation of COVID-related supplies? Uh, I'm not sure if some if the importers made uh, made use of this uh, super green lane, but but uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, during the uh, importation of these uh, PPEs and essential uh, and critical goods, many of them were expeditiously uh, uh, processed uh, under the Bayanihan law. Yes, sir. it was previously hampered with various concerns, such as uh, the entry of illegal drugs. Have we rectified all these problems? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Madam Senator. Uh, we improved and upgraded our risk management uh, system. And uh, this is the reason why uh, we also uh, came up with a new selectivity uh, profile, uh, the orange lane, uh, which made sure that uh, uh, important and critical shipments uh, prone to, uh, uh, to smuggling are uh, subjected to 100% uh, X-ray and examination. Example po anong prone to smuggling? Uh, agricultural goods, ma'am. Yep. Uh, reefers, those are uh, being transported using a uh, reefer uh, containers. Uh, cigarettes. Yung, po yung, yung, yung po ko, sana ang itatanong ko next eh. Kasi hindi ko mahanap dito, siguro nasa regular MOE continuing appropriations ninyo at napakatagal na nito. Ano na nangyari sa Philippine National Single Window? Parang si Senator Villara ako. Uh, malilit pa lang kami na balitaan na natin tong single window. Ano na nangyari diyan? Kasi a few months ago meron na naman BOC modernization. Yung ba yun? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're happy to report that uh, we are making progress as far as the national single window is concerned. Uh, What's the progress? Kasi di ba nagwawala rin yung ARTA na napakarami yes. rin hindi pa kasama dyan sa single window at yung ano ba yun? Trade something, opo? Eh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Madam Senator. Uh, in fact, ARTA is already included uh, in the technical working group which is actually responsible for uh, the implementation of the national single window. 
Uh, right now, we have already a total of uh, 13. Sir, nasa PWG stage pa lang kayo after all these years? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I was just referring to the uh, entity responsible for the implementation of the single window, which is the technical working group, which I chair and is co-chaired by uh, ARTA Director General. And as I was reporting, we have already a total of uh, 13 agencies onboarded, and we plan to complete the onboarding process by next year for a total of uh, uh, 20, uh, total of uh, 40 regulatory agencies, 19 monitoring agencies, 16 eco zones, and uh, four policy agencies. So a total of 75 agencies by next year. So yung ating mga agricultural smuggling na binabantayan namin, eh talagang masusupil na sa wakas? Ganun ba yun? Promise ha? Uh, hopefully, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Senator, especially with the uh, establishment of the uh, uh, examination areas, uh, agricultural uh, commodities examination areas at the different ports. Oh, Senator Villar, narinig po ninyo ha. Totoo na yan. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. We're very hopeful that indeed this will come to pass. May I call on the BIR, please? Sino pa nandyan? Commissioner, Commissioner Dula is, uh, is here with us, I believe. Commissioner? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, In uh, June 30, 2021, the president signed RA 11569, yung estate tax amnesty. Do you have a pre-pandemic projection of this revenue? Uh, if so, how much of the expected was uh, actually generated? And uh, do we already have the memo circulars and regulations for said extension? I don't have the, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Senator, please. Ay, pakisa pin na lang po kung meron kayong projection para malaman natin kasi bagong-bagong batas eh. Yes, I think uh, I'd, presently I don't have the figures now because uh, this was coordinated with the Department of Finance. But I have some figures here on the state of uh, our collection on these uh, two areas, the state tax amnesty and the tax amnesty on delinquency. Uh, as of uh, gen from January to June 2021, the tax amnesty delinquency collection, which expired June 30, amounted to 7.8 billion pesos. The state tax amnesty collection as of uh, August, amounts to 5.1 billion uh, how pesos. Do, how do both sums, um, how do both sums, Commissioner, compare with the uh, projected pre-pandemic? Malaki ba talaga yung uh, bawas? Uh, well, I, I, I haven't. Uh, I don't have the figures on the pre-pandemic uh, projections, but uh, we can give you that data as soon as we have one. Thank you very much, at, uh, Commissioner. We also would like to inquire about the regulation that has become so controversial. Yung uh, 9-2021, when you suspended in July, at the end of July, uh, the imposed 12% VAT on previously exempt materials sold to local manufacturers and exporters after objections were raised by the industry. Um, the question arises, though, among uh, manufacturers as well as exporters, uh, how has uh, the VAT refund system operated? Has it been effective or is it not yet fully in place? Allocate, uh, say if you, rec I, I think uh, the chamber, uh, the the committee will recall, the subcommittee will recall that uh, 167.861 million was allocated for the principal payment of building programs under lease purchase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All to do with uh, VRS or VAT refund. Okay, na ba siya? 
Uh, we don't have the figure uh, at hand, but we can furnish you the figure as to the effectivity of this refund system. Yes, we just wanted to know if it's already in operation. And I think uh, Secretary Dominguez wishes to be recognized, so, Mr. Chairman. Three points. Please, please uh, go ahead, Secretary, if you wish to contribute on this issue. Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Marcos, um, the train law required us to uh, uh, refund, uh, implement the refunds yes. within 90 days. Mm -hmm. And we have met that uh, standard already. So in accordance with the law, the tax refund uh, is, is uh, implemented in accordance with what uh, the train law required. We uh, 90 days. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. And we're aware of that accomplishment, which was uh, well nigh impossible. But I think a controversy arose uh, with this 12% uh, VAT on previously exempt materials. Dun nagkagulo ulit eh, dun sa RR9-2021. Uh, kaya ta, eto nga, nag-aalala nag kami with the passage of CREATE as well, a new set of... Uh, Revenue regulations are uh, supposed to put uh, all these things together. So we wanted to inquire also about the new revenue regulation for uh, RR9 2021 in view of the uh, IRR for CREATE. Meron na ba noon? Senator. Yes, Paul. Uh, the, new, the new regulations are about to be issued. Ah, okay. So they will be issued shortly. Thank you. Yes, that's good news, sir, because there was a level of uncertainty and unease among uh, many manufacturers and exporters. Thank you, Paul. So, uh, um, aside from that, I uh, would like to inquire from uh, the Bureau of Treasury, please, if I still have time. I think yes, this is about the treasurer. Yes, 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 you still yes, do, uh, Senator, uh, Senator Naimi. Uh, the national I'm treasurer. Uh, ah, the national Deleon. treasurer is here. Yes, 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 yes ma'am. Yes, um, the debt profile shows a clear bias for domestic financing, as explained by uh, Secretary Dominguez in the previous hearing. Um, the BTR has an allocation of $2.428 billion for investment outlays. Uh, including the first tranche settlement of the scheme of claims between BSP and the national government. Can you please explain what this uh, payment refers to? And if it is merely the first tranche, what is uh, the uh, schedule for the others to follow? Um, the the one billion that we're paying to BSP, ma'am, uh, is the first payment uh, on the twelve billion settlement um, given the advances made by the central bank for the payment for our um, quota increase. This is the revaluation because uh, we are paying in SDR, and there you know there would be some fluctuation in terms of the conversion of the different currencies the five uh, basket of currencies that are, are included in the sdr calculation i'm not certain we're talking about the same thing ma'am there's an allocation in your budget for 2.428 billion not 1 billion po that's, that's... it says investment outlays for the first tranche settlement scheme of claims bsp and national are we referring to the same yes, thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, the allocation in our NEP is just one billion. Uh, one billion is in your NEP. That's all. It's not the two point four. Now, well, if I may clarify, maybe um the one billion represents the settlement with the BSP, but there's also the as uh, mentioned by Secretary Dominguez for our international commitment fund. Of about 1.352.7 billion. Baka pinag, uh, pinag, uh, yung dalawa? Uh, because they're all included po sa capital outlay, but it's separated in terms of the allocation. 
You're saying po that the 1 billion is 1 out of 12 billion na yes, sunod-sunod. Kailan yes, ba bayaran yung iba sa BSP? Yung remaining um, na 11 million? Ma'am, uh, as we have negotiated with the BSP, uh, it depends when we have the fiscal space to be able to provide for that uh, payment. Uh, kasi yung sa maturity profile ninyo, maliwanag na purus halos sa uh, uh, short and medium term, mostly medium. Wala naman masyadong lo long term. So I was just curious uh, uh, if it depends on uh, fiscal uh, uh, capability, uh, how long is uh, that going to take? Um, Ma'am, with regards to the maturity profile of um, our debt portfolio, a uh, uh, sizable portion of that continues to be within the medium to long term po, because we have also our um, external issuances which run from a maturity of about 10 to 25 years. Now, yes, uh, uh, Madam Treasurer, uh, with all due respect, uh, a chart was shown by the DOF which clearly showed that there were very few uh, long term uh, debts, and uh, I uh, noticed it because of the continued IMF uh, recommendation that we focus on more foreign debt loads uh, in the long term. Ma'am, uh, if uh, I may... Uh, one more minute, uh, Vice Chair Marcos. Yes, uh, um, yes ma'am. Uh, in our um, data, about 9.7 constitutes a short term, so that yes. is one year and below. 25.2 con uh, constitutes medium term and yes. 65.1 constitute po long term um, uh, obligations. Yes, with that, may I uh, just request for a detailed uh, breakdown of the Bureau of Treasury as uh, it appears, at least on its face, to be in conflict with the chart presented by the DOF. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We'll do, po, ma'am. Thank you. Salamat po. Thank you. Salamat. Uh, thank you very much to our Vice Chairperson, Senator Aimee, for sticking to her time. Thank you very much, ma'am. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. Uh, the next senator to ask is uh, our another Vice Chairperson of the committee, Senator Cynthia Villar. Ma'am, good afternoon. You're recognized. Uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Chairman Sani, and of course, our Secretary of Finance, uh, Dominguez. Uh, since uh, Senator Aimi talked of agriculture and agricultural smuggling, uh, I would think that uh, we are now monitoring the tariffs on agriculture because we have written laws wherein the tariff on agriculture will be spent for projects to benefit the farmers. Kaya medyo nagmo-monitor na rin yung farmers kasi kung hindi makakolekta ng tariff, de walang gagastahin para sa kanila. In fact, uh, in the rice, 10 billion will be given in the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. And I think the House, we have passed in the Senate, the House will pass that the excess in 10 billion will be given as uh, financial assistance to farmers owning uh, one hectare and below. Oh, para kung may mga problema at yun ang mga pinakamahihirap nating farmer, meron tayong pera para ibigay sa kanila. Anyway, wala po tayong problema sa uh, uh, yung tariff on rice kasi uh, every week <laughs> parang nakalagay sa dyaryo kung ano yung nakolekta sa or monthly yung kung ano nakolekta sa tariff on rice kasi tingin ko interesado yung mga rice farmer to know how much uh, the government has collected in terms of rice tariff because that will go to them but ang isang hindi namin na monitor is yung uh, tariff on other products other than rice yung ASEF kasi pupunta yon sa agricultural Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. So, pwede ba kami bigyan ng uh, report on what has happened to ASEF? Oo. Kasi yun ang hindi na mo monitor talaga. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Senator mm -hmm. Villar, uh, thank you. Uh, our uh, monitoring on uh, the rice uh, tariff uh, collection. collection are actually published every two weeks yes yes uh, we know that we know that on, on, on the rest uh 
we have not published it, but uh, it's available and we can uh, we can publish that as well. Yeah. For the ASAP uh, yeah. amounts. We will we will start doing that, ma'am. Yes, you. because parang nakalimutan yung ASAP. Miski ako na chairman ng Committee on Agriculture, hindi ko nga alam tong ASAP na to kung magkano today. Oo. Oh, oh. Uh, yes. Before lang, nalaman ko lang yung ASEP, what happened to ASEP when we had to renew the ASEP uh, in 2016 because it expired in 2016. But after that, walang report on uh, what is the ASEP collection. So uh, maybe you can ask the one in charge to give us a regular report. I think di naman every two weeks, but at least uh, uh, every quarter. So we will know. Well, what we have collected for the Agricultural Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Anyway, right now, 80% will be given to Land Bank and DBP for uh, for loans, and the rest would be given to CHED for uh, scholarship of uh, the children of farmers in agriculture and, of course, uh, uh, research. So we would like to know how much are given to them uh, right every quarter. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's all. Will, uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at the end of this month, we will give you a summary for the first uh, three quarters of uh, this year and yes. uh, every quarter after that. Thank, Thank you, you very ma'am. much. Okay. And then I, I read in your report also that you are going to do something, uh, some projects to improve yung local government finance. Uh, can you describe those projects that will be given? I'm sure many of us have local government uh, uh, relationships, so we would know what you're going to do for them to, do, to make them better. Uh, just describe to us these local government finance uh, projects. Uh, yes, ma'am. In general, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Villar, in general, we have focused uh, on improving the uh, capabilities of the local government uh, finance people. Uh, we have gotten a uh, world, uh, sorry, uh, Asian Development Bank assistance. But let me turn over to... Uh, BLGF Director uh, Alvina for the details. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, um, this is uh, from the Bureau of Local Government Finance. Go ahead, Director. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For next year, we, have, we are implementing uh, programs and trainings for local governments that will improve property tax administration. And we are investing around um, 172 million for training for local governments, and that is under the LGRP project. Out of our regular funds, we are also, uh, we have budgeted 34.9 million for trainings for uh, local treasurers. In addition to that, uh, Madam Senator, we are also developing an information system that links national and local government when it comes to property uh, information so that it would help uh, improve efficiency in national and local uh, tax administration from real property. Yeah. Madam Chair. Okay. So, uh, in effect, you are allocating 205 million, something like that? Around 207 million for uh, capacity, oh. building, train, capacity building and training, Senator. Next Do year. you think that's enough to train our local government? Uh, Madam Senator, our program is multi year, so this will cover until 2024. We'll start mm -hmm. with uh, a number of LGUs and gradually expand our uh, tools. Uh, for our local governments. What have you done before? So we will uh, have an idea of what you have done before and what you are going to do in the future. In the last uh, three to five, uh, three or four years, uh, Madam Senator, we have updated our manuals for our treasurers and our uh, assessors. We have also uh, fully institutionalized the professionalization program for our treasurers such that they undergo 
uh, a standardized examination administered by the Civil Service uh, Commission. And we use this as a tool in improving our designation and appointment of local treasurers all over the Philippines. We mm -hmm. have also improved our manner of um, uh, providing the borrowing uh, or certifying the borrowing capacity of local governments that are venturing into credit financing because we certify whether it's within the threshold of local governments to borrow and amortize for a given year. So these are the core areas, uh, Madam Senator, that uh, we have uh, worked on. And moving forward, we want to transform them uh, into more uh, into into the adoption of more digital tools uh, for local tax administration. Uh, there is a pending bill in the Senate with regards to property valuation. Will that affect your program in the local government? There is a pending bill. Eh? Yes, Madam. So how is that related to your program in local government? That pending bill. That bill, uh, Madam Senator, will actually institutionalize all the administrative and executive actions and programs that we have um, uh, established in the BLGF. And the bill in itself will actually address the legal um, uh, um, concerns and the policy uh, constraints in property uh, valuation and uh, tax administration. That will vest uh, the uh, Department of Finance and through our Bureau of Local Government Finance, greater mandates to support local governments in this area of uh, property tax administration. So it's it's a long-term sustainability uh, measure, uh, Madam Senator, uh, that uh, package three or the comprehensive of the comprehensive tax reform program. So it's not really to increase the taxes on property, but it's just to institutionalize the system. And, uh, because yes. I think this is not the time to increase taxes because people are suffering from this pandemic and they have no money to pay taxes. So it's more of institutionalizing rather than increasing property, property valuation. The, the decision, Madam Senator, still rests with the local uh, governments, whether they are uh, um, uh, adopting a higher uh, tax uh, mm -hmm. What we are addressing is the uh, technical dimension of valuation, which is to adopt standards, use the right uh, systems in determining the base. But in imposing the tax rate or assessment level, that will still be the uh, prerogative of the local, the local government. government. Now, in appointing treasurers and assessors, uh, do you require a certain qualification before they can be appointed or... Uh, anybody can be appointed in that position. Certainly. Based on uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Senator. Certainly, we have uh, standards, and these are provided by law. And we have actually improved uh, uh, our implementation, uh, Madam Senator. In the case of local treasurers, I have mentioned uh, earlier that we have adopted this uh, three-level competency certification program. It's an examination-based program uh, administered by the Civil Service uh, Commission. Uh, and we have, uh, we allocate points for purposes of uh, uh, appointing uh, treasurers. I think mm -hmm. around 60 or 70% of the appointed uh, treasurers of uh, Secretary uh, Dominguez have already gone through this examination process and have been certified to possess the necessary competencies for local treasury work. In the case of the assessors, uh, Madam Senator, uh, they are appointed by the local chief executive, but the DOF uh, and the BLGF have, have adopted uh, or pursued rather um, higher qualification standards with the uh, passage of Republic Act 9646 or the Real Estate Service Act requiring examination uh, for real estate appraiser before one becomes appointed or gets appointed uh, as an assessor in any province, city, or municipality. And we continuously provide trainings and uh, manuals like what I have mentioned earlier, Madam Senator. So we support these important actors in local uh, fiscal governance as far as the Bureau of Local Government Finance is concerned, Madam Senator. Uh, can you give me those, uh, what you say, qualification and all that write-up so I will know if our assessor and our uh, treasurer are meeting those qualifications. Huh? 
Can you yes. give me a write up and the manuals and all that? Thank you very much. That's all, Miss uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the Department of Finance. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Vice Chairperson Villar, and uh, a reminder to our committee secretary to follow up on all the document requests of our uh, senators and vice chairs. Next to ask is uh, Senator Nancy B. Knight. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Secretary Dominguez, and to the whole DOF family. Um, I guess, Secretary Dominguez, can I just uh, get your vaccination status of um, the different agencies under DOF? Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Yung vaccination status, ho, kung ilan na ho ba yung nababakunahan sa iba't ibang opisina under DOF? Under DOF? Um, I don't know all uh, of DOF, uh, of all the agencies, but I have the figures for DOF as of last week. 86% so have been inoculated already. Oh. Congratulations. Congratulations, Secretary. Thank you, ma'am. They've heard immunity in the DOF. Yeah. They, they have heard immunity already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kaya less disruption na sa DOF office. <laughs> we practice uh, what we preach. <laughs> uh, siguro ako sa BIR. Baka si Commissioner Dulay I, I would know. Hurt. Uh, Let me ask uh, Commissioner Dulay if he knows. Vice Chair, uh, wait, hold on. I think Vice Chair uh, Villar is raising her hand. Ma'am, is it on this topic? Yeah, I just want to make a manifestation. Na ang yes, with the permission of Senator Bina. Yes, please. please, go ahead. Ang malaking disruption is in the court. Wala na yatang nagpa-function na courts ngayon. Eh. Delayed lahat. So maybe uh, Secretary Dominguez, you can help yung ating uh, uh, Supreme Court na ma-vaccinate. Kasi... Wala nang wala na kaming mapatambu na na ano tawag dito mga court case kasi sarado lahat ng court eh. I think they have Thank to you. really automate their processes uh, your honor <laughs> to really speed up uh, for them uh, uh, to be vaccinated here in our office. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you for that uh, point. Uh, you, you have the floor again, uh, Senator Nancy. I think you have a standing question to Commissioner, Commissioner Dulay. Dulay. Yeah, Commissioner, go ahead, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, here at the NCR, early on, we requested for vaccines through the Secretary of Finance. As of today, uh, in NCR, we have 1,500 employees uh, already vaccinated. That's close to 100% in NCR. Uh, there are other employees uh, from the LGUs, which we accommodated here at the national office. Uh, as far as our regions are concerned, they, they arrange with their own vaccination program from uh, region one all the way to region 19. So, but uh, the bad news is we still have some some fatalities on the COVID uh, nineteen pandemic. And, Thank you, com sir. and Commissioner Dulay, hindi naman hindi naman disrupted yung services of DIR. No, I don't know if um katulad ng ano ko yun ni Senator Silvia sa may mga courts na nagla lockdown sila because of um surges. Ang BIR ho ba na may instance din na napilitan silang magsara? We have the, if we find uh, some uh, personnel or employees positive, we automatically lock down the district. But uh, overall, uh, I think uh, we have done pretty well. Our connections are still on track and uh, we do it mostly through Zoom and through the internet. Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, maybe it's a BOC? Yes, Secretary yeah, Dominguez. From, uh, 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 yeah, Mr. From Chair. Secretary. Sen uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Binay, actually we've been uh, happy with the Bureau of Internal Revenues because uh, they have been pretty close to hitting their targets in the collections. 
I think uh, a lot of that is uh, because uh, they have already digitalized uh, most of uh, their their uh, filings. In fact, uh, the figure that uh, I mentioned earlier was that uh, in 2015, only 10% of the taxpayers filed online. As of April 15 of this year, uh, more than 99% of the taxpayers have filed online. So they don't have to line up and uh, they, have the, they don't have to go to the banks. They can, they can uh, just transfer their money to us by pressing a button. So uh, we have to, I've been very happy and I've uh, uh, congratulated the uh, uh, Billy Dulai and uh, his team there, including uh, the DEPCOM in charge of uh, the IT, who is Lani, uh, Lani David, for uh, doing a very good job in the di digitalization. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations to the Bureau, the BIR, Commissioner Dulai, and to DEPCOM David and to Secretary Dominguez. I know this because I've been tracking this, Senator Binay, since I was chair of Ways and Means back in 2013. And really, we were getting so many complaints from uh, those who tried to file online because sabi nila, they had to file online, pero required pa rin yung filing uh, ng hard copy. So now it's in, it's really in lieu. And the BIR and DOF have increased their bandwidth. So they are able to, hindi na nagbabag down yung sistema. I can I am a witness to the many complaints. I was uh I had to hear many of them during our committee hearings. Uh, Your honor just wanted to share. Sana yung BOC can also make headway uh, since they are given a budget for next year. Hopefully we can get details on that. And dito sa single window na banggit ni Senator Marcos yan at dito sa binabanggit mo. Maybe we can hear from the bureau kay Commissioner Ray. Mr. Chair, uh, could, Mr. Could Chairman, you, siguro, be, before yeah. we go back dun sa question ka about vaccination, since we're COVID, already, COVID, yeah. Yeah, since yeah. We're already dun sa topic ng um, dig digitalization and computerization, um, ako lang, well, this is not really a complaint, but more of my personal experience, baka dun sa database management, um, um, kasi, well, I ended up being a uh, part of two RDs. But I requested yung isang RD um, na dapat doon na lang ako sa main RD mag, mag transact right? Tama, da, tama ako ganun, Commissioner Dulay, di ba? And my requ request was granted. Uh, kaso lang, a month after, uh, I received the letter from doon sa RD na kung saan dapat hindi na ako kasama stating that I have to go to BIR, na hindi ako nagbayad ng income tax ko, uh, and, uh, and then I can be uh, uh, given penalties for not complying. But you know, at the end of the day, nagbayad naman ho ako dun sa kabilang RD. So number one, hindi ba dapat when uh, you sent out that letter, dapat automatic, hindi ba dapat dun sa computer program nyo, automatic na di-delete na ako from that RD. Hindi ho ba dapat ganun yung sistema? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, one of the probable reasons why I'm not using this is the, the transmittal must have been delayed. But uh, the feedback I get after taxpayer complaints on this kind, uh, the RD usually uh, checks and uh, recalls whatever, whatever letters are issued to see to it that uh, the taxpayer is in the proper district, registered in the proper district. So, Commissioner Dule, would this mean that I'll be getting a letter from that other RD stating na uh, hindi pala, compliant ka pala, nagbayad ka na pala dun sa kabilang RD? Well, I or, think... Or would the taxpayer end up going to BIR showing them na ito na yung binayaran ko dun sa kabilang RD? Because I'm sure how hindi lang ako kasi yung, yung letter that I got was a generic letter. So, alam niyo, Mr. Chairman, yung parang mimeograph lang. Tapos yung, yung pirma no RD, ano lang, uh, naka, naka stencil. So, hindi pa nga siya personalized. Eh. Right, right. Maybe the commissioner could look into the case. Uh, yes, and, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, set the record straight. Uh, 
Mr. Commissioner, please. Thank you. Oh, and then just to yes, add, sir, tapos, tapos, Commissioner Dula, may phone number din ho na nakalagay doon. I tried calling para makausap nga and to explain my my situation, but the number was uh, cannot be reached. So, uh, and then, baka ho din mas maganda na baka may email address na rin nakasama doon sa uh, letter. As we move forward towards digitalization and computerization, na baka may, may ganong access, lalong-lalo na ngayon na may problema tayo sa COVID dahil, uh, alam niyo, Mr. Chairman, hindi pa nga ako nakaka-compliant dun, uh, dun sa RD na yan kasi nga natatakot ako uh, lumabas or magpalabas ng staff dahil alam ko naman nagbayad ako, di ba? So at the end of the day, I'm sure kung may penalties man ako, eh, uh, ma ma maaalis yun because... I have paid right. my my ITR, uh, my taxes. But I am sure, Commissioner Dule, baka marami din tayong mga taxpayers would, who would be encountering the same problem. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have noted all the, the comments of Senator Binay and uh, we will certainly uh, do some make some improvements on on that particular problem. Salamat, salamat, uh, Commissioner. Okay, thank you, thank you, Commissioner Dulay. Uh, ano lang huyan? Siguro to improve your uh, customer service. Thank you. Yeah, um, very good I, suggestion. I guess, uh, Mr. Chairman, going back dun sa question ko, can we hear from Bureau of Customs? Yeah. This is on uh, the COVID, uh, the, the vaccination. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner, yung uh, kamusta yung uh, mga kawani ng uh, bureau na vaccinate na ba ng 100%? Especially since so, you deal with, uh, you come into contact with a lot of uh, people. No? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, we are now 90% uh, vaccinated dito sa Bureau of Customs. Okay, uh, Tapos total na 4,320. Uh, ang hindi na lang na bakunaan ni sa 10%, 432. Okay. okay, congratulations. Huwag vaccinated na muna palabasin yung 10%, Commissioner, <laughs> sa, sa office, sa bahay, o sa muna sila kung pwede, pwede. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes, Senator. Okay, congratulations. And um, siguro moving forward, um, kay Commissioner Guerrero, I don't know if Sen Aimee and Senator Villar would remember, yung hearing natin sa African um, swine fever, di ba? Ang issue during that time was border control. And during that time, ang reklamo ng BOC was para hindi sila uh, equipped uh, to secure the border kasi nga yung um, technical know-how, ganyan-ganyan. Na-address na, na ho ba yan or ma-address na ho ba yan with next year's budget? Uh, as far as the uh, facility, the uh, agricultural commodity examination area is concerned, ma'am, I cannot answer that question because... Uh, the, the, the funds will be uh, for uh, the Department of Agriculture. Uh, they are the agency that's supposed to undertake yung uh, project na yun. But in the meantime, we're closely coordinating with the uh, agencies under the Department of Agriculture to uh, improve and enhance our capability for uh, examination and detection. Uh, they have also uh, increased their presence here in the ports for us to be able to jointly inspect yung mga containers na dumarating. On the part of the Bureau of Customs, we have instituted additional measures uh, on agricultural shipments. Uh, right now, all agricultural shipments, particularly yung mga reefer containers, are subjected to 100% X-ray. And uh, apart from yung inspection dito sa, yung sinasabing 10% uh, uh, examination dito sa rampa, dito sa ating mga ports, we are also uh, intensifying yung ins inspection at the second border points, uh, particularly in the uh, cold storage warehouses of the DA, uh, where we also assist them in making sure that uh, itong mga shipments, mga reefer containers na ito are not uh, mis uh, misrouted or diverted through the use of a GPS tracking system. Uh, 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 yun po, uh, wait, Mr. So, Chairman. So, um, Commissioner Guerrero, yes, since yes, nasa... Sen Binay, yes. sasangayan yes, lang ako kay Commissioner na actually hinahanap ko yun sa DA budget eh, yung inspection kasi iisa lang yung inspection na uh, facility nila na maayos eh dapat apat yun at the very least. Eh parang hindi ko mahanap sa budget na naman although sinasabi nila kulang sa kanila. So susunod na kabanata, DA naman. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, Commissioner Guerrero. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Senator. I'm okay na, Mr. Chairman. Ah, you're done, uh, yes. Senator Nancy. Thank you. Malapit na rin tayo Joel, uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for your concern for our uh, workers, uh, Senator Nancy, and your very good questions. Uh, Vice Chairperson Joel, sir, good afternoon. You, you're, good afternoon. It's your turn. You have 10 minutes, sir. I know, I know, but uh, I already uh, told you, uh, Mr. Chair, that I will no longer ask questions. Uh, but uh, I just realized I, if I could just uh, 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 pause one question to our dear Secretary, Secretary uh, Dominguez of the Department of Finance, uh, sir. Um, yes, today, please, so, yes, please, uh, oh, just, just one uh, question, because you know, today I'm I, I'm on my way to the Senate. Actually, that's why I will no longer pursue asking questions. But I just have one question because today I'm uh, scheduled to defend again for the seventh time the creation of uh, Department of uh, Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos uh, for the seventh time. Po, and uh, I just wanted to find out. Uh, Secretary, if it if we are still on the right track, because uh, I have uh, experienced before, uh, Secretary, I, I think you know what I'm talking about, and uh, I just don't want to to experience the same thing, Secretary. I hope that uh, we are still in the right direction. As mentioned earlier, I think in uh, the DBCC, uh, meron naman pong pupuntahan, mas marami magbe-benepisyo, and yung uh, right-sizing principle, uh, dun sa seven uh, agencies na pag-iisahin, nakikita din naman po natin. But uh, I am just hoping that uh, I, I, I will get also your uh, support on this kasi yung ilang senators, they're using your uh, statements uh, uh, in the past that, uh, that the uh, economic advisors are uh, against the uh, creation of the Department of uh, uh, Migrant Workers in Overseas Philippines. Just, that's just one question that I'd like to ask, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. Uh, Senator, on this particular department, we have uh, written uh, our comment and uh, we've said uh, we support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, uh, no uh, veto, 100%, uh, <laughs> Secretary Sani. Because Senator it's, Joe does not want not to take the crown away from another senator. Let's not name him here, but uh, there is it's, a veto it's, champion. It's not a revenue it. measure, Mr. Senator. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Dominguez. Uh, we will uh, uh, surely uh, uh, echo your uh, position on this particular uh, matter, and I think it is very important. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you very much uh, to our Vice Chairperson, Senator Joel. Uh, we appreciate uh, the brevity of his questions. Uh, Senator Pimentel, what we were told, is online. Uh, we don't know if he's still interested in asking questions. Uh, Comsec, uh, is he still online, Dina? Because we can do a second round. Uh, we can do a second round if uh, we finished with our senators who have logged in earlier. We can ask our uh, senators present uh, in, again in order of login. Vice Chairperson IME, are you still around? Would you like to ask any more questions? Yeah, you have the floor Actually, if you wish. I have a question about the BLGF. Yeah, please. Oh, now the 2022 budget includes both the loan proceeds and the government counterpart of the local government reform project. And... Uh, that because it's only the government counterpart and uh, loan proceeds were lodged in the end program. Uh, so I suppose this accounts for the increase. The uh, foreign assisted uh, project from an ADB loan uh, commenced the third quarter of 2020. So I was just uh, curious about the state of affairs with regard to the LGRP. Uh, Maybe someone from uh, BLGF can enlighten us because the budget. Yeah, either secretary is... or uh, director Aldina maybe can help. Oh, oh yeah, it's increased by fifty five point eight percent because of the inclusion of the loan proceeds. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, your honor. Yeah, go ahead, director, please. Uh, Madam Hi, Senator, hello. good afternoon. Um, regarding the LGRP, you're right, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, the increase in our budget. Uh, would be due to the uh, local, government, local government reform uh, uh, project. And 
on on the status of our uh, implementation, uh, I am pleased to update you that uh, the president has issued an administrative order already, AO40, creating the <clears throat> intergover inter agency governing board to oversee the implementation of this project. Uh, this is chaired by Secretary of uh, Finance and involves uh, several government agencies such as BIR, DILG, DBM, NEDA, uh, and uh, private sector and uh, um, NGO, as well as uh, DICT. Uh, currently, uh, Madam now, Senator... The concern, are... I think, on the part of the LGUs, once uh, again, is the devolution issue, because until today, we have not seen the devolution uh, documents, and all that has appeared is Executive Order 128. So there needs to be some kind of listing so that clarity is uh, won regarding the projects of the LGF as far as implementation of the Mandanas ruling is concerned. Is it just the LGRP or are there other projects pa? Yun ang it's, it's, ng lahat eh. it's only LGRP, uh, Madam Senator, for uh, BLGF, uh, that amount. But uh, as to your question on uh, the implementation of the devolution uh, transition plans of the LGUs, the BLGF, uh, Madam Senator, is assisting uh, local governments in the development of their devolution transition plan, uh, especially... Yeah, eh, kasi very unfriendly in terms niyo, nung gobernador ako, hindi ko, hindi ako makautang sa inyo eh. <laughs> uh, Madam Senator, I think ang uh, inyong mga terms. The second time around, Senator, I think. Then I need ko na lang daw magabono. Sana. <laughs> Are we talking about the loans sa land bank, uh, Vice Chair? Is that what we're discussing? Yeah, iba pa to eh. Ito yung loan proceeds from ADB eh. Kaya nga, I'm uh, going to now, sa haba ng panahon, ano ba yung mga project niyan? So, uh, no, please? Apo, uh, Madam Senator, the LGRP is only a, uh, it's a project supported by uh, the ADB uh, whose focus is to improve the property tax administration of LGUs. Yes, that's right. This, this is not going to be a, a, a lending support for all LGUs in relation to their uh, to the implementation That's of correct. Mandana. That's Mandana. correct. Iba pa sa land bank yun at yung iba't iba pang na window na pre-provide ng mga finance. Them. Yes, Madam Senator. As regards their lending uh, activities with GFIs and other banks, uh, our role is to uh, certify their borrowing uh, capacity, especially for those that are um, uh, pursuing capital uh, outlays for hospitals, for roads, bridges, among yes, others. I I actually had very good experience with an Australian uh, component that had to do with property tax administration called Regala when we computerized everything in three towns and uh, succeeded in almost tripling collections in certain cases. Ang question ko nga, what are the projects of the LGF? So perhaps you can just provide to the chairman and our committee so that we can read it uh, carefully and uh, impart the same information to the LGUs who are constantly asking. Kasi parang sa kanila, hindi naman daw sila na aambunan niyan. Madam Senator, uh, this time under the LGRP, this is a more scaled up version of the Regala. The Regala project that uh, you had in uh, Ilocos we are expanding our coverage to more LGUs so that they will That's also why I'm very keen. Eh? I was very keen uh, to pilot and I'm very keen also to make sure it scales because uh, it was very effective. My other question is that the Real Property Valuation and Assessment Reform Act remains spending in the Senate. Uh, in the event that we pass this, how ready is the BLGF, you're a very small office, uh, to implement its passage? Uh, currently, uh, Madam Senator, we are already uh, readying for the implementation of that uh, measure. Uh, that's why this project is very instrumental for us to build the necessary systems. We have to go digital uh, and for us to be more effective in our oversight for uh, local governments and provide the LGUs with the right tools to make their tax administration more efficient. In the bill, Madam Senator, we are proposing an additional service. It's around uh, uh, 18 to 20 uh, additional staff in the central office and 
I think two staff for every region for this uh, uh, for the additional mandate that would be provided by that uh, proposal. So we are humingi preparing. Humingi ba kayo ng pera? Humingi, humingi na ba kayo ng pera kay Chairman Sani para dyan sa expansion na yan? Parang wala eh. Uh, <laughs> wala pa, Senator. Pending approval of the uh, package to rebuild. Okay, thanks very much, Nino. Thank and, you very much, uh, Madam Senator, Mr. Chair. If there's a little Thank bit you. of time, I just wanted to ask Secretary of Finance uh, again, during the DBCC budget, uh, hmm. the situation of the airline industry was discussed. In particular, the Secretary mentioned the key role of government, uh, the GFIs as keystone financiers in the 16 billion financial package for Cebu Pacific. Are there any other industries we are looking at that will need bailing out in the near future? And um, how do we choose these industries um, for the opportunity of government uh, intervention? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Sen Senator Marcos, actually there is a pending bill. A um, guide bill. Before your uh, committee, which... Uh, the, the guide department. are you referring po to the guide i'm sorry yes to the guide bill before yes, the I senate the author yeah. po in the upper house yes yes in the senate that uh we the department of uh, finance and the bsp has actually um, contributed to uh, this bill was uh, put up in anticipation of uh, the needs of uh systemically important companies uh, in the Philippines. And uh, I believe that at this point in time, that will include most likely uh, the hotel industry will uh, require a lot of help. Uh, but is it systemically important, Paul? Unlike transport, which is clearly essential. Well, the 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 tourism industry generates a lot of foreign exchange and yeah. uh, creates a lot of jobs in the in the uh, countryside uh, and uh, they are good jobs so i think it is the industry as a whole is systemically important okay uh, i think also uh, just going, uh, after a definition sir yeah yeah I think that's a very, very systemically important. I think uh, companies in the health service okay. uh, industry, uh, including uh, do we manufacturer. Include... Yes, ma'am. Yes, manufacturer. Uh, do manufacturer. we include hospitals as uh, the hospital yes, industry? Yes, same industry? as hospitals, as hospitals as well. Uh, With are, the permission uh, of uh, Senator Marcos. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Secretary, I just want to go sing it because I might run out of time. Uh, we have a bill with Senator Gordon regarding because of the expiration of the SRA or the Special uh, Risk Allowance of our health workers with the Bayanihan 2. There's a bill to uh, give them these benefits. no? Uh, and uh, there's a running debate about who should be paid these benefits. So we'd like to solicit your opinion. We're having a hearing on that bill next week, the Committee on Finance. Uh, so we'd like to get your position. Uh, we assume you'll be talking to the DOH uh, because we don't want to just pass a bill and uh, deliver false promises no, to our uh, yes. health workers. So uh, we'd appreciate that. Uh, uh, we're you. preparing our comments. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I, I'll put it out there already, again, with the permission of our vice chair, because uh, uh, I might forget, <laughs> is uh, could you, after you name the strategic sectors, could you give us uh, an update along with Land Bank and DBP on the funds uh, we appropriated under Bayanihan too? If they've been fully uh, loaned out or or, uh, yes. or if there are still uh, balances? But but go ahead. I I, uh, uh, I did mean to interrupt. Uh, you're, you're, we're in the middle of answering uh, Vice Chair Marx's uh, question. Yes. Please continue, sir. Well, uh, uh, let me uh, say. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we will provide you a report on the utilization of the funds uh, that have been allocated for Land Bank and uh, DBP. Well, uh, to go back to the question of uh, Senator Marcos, 
definitely, uh, again, uh, sustainable industries uh, might also include shipping. Uh, the shipping industry. Yes, yeah, certainly. Shipping. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there might, well, the, the transportation industry as a whole, as you mentioned, yes. but uh, shipping in particular, I think, uh, will require some assistance. Uh, I, I don't already, have an example. They're already yeah. asking, I think, uh, the Cebu sector is already uh, requesting very publicly and very noisily. The, I beg your pardon, the Cebu? The Cebu shipping uh, sector yes. Yes. has been very yeah. vocal. Yes, I think I think they need the, they need assistance. Uh, we can provide it, but certainly uh, the guide bill will uh, certainly enhance that uh, potential uh, um, uh, assistance. Uh, let me just mention here that uh, some objections have been, oh, you know, the administration or the uh, the people who will be running the the company that uh, will be set up under guide will might uh, be might be uh, politicized or be take favorites, and that is why one of the items that we put in the bill that uh, we proposed is uh, for the this company to open up uh, and allow investments from uh, the private sector and international institutions such as the IFC, uh, which is the, the private sector financing arm of the World Bank. If you have them in there, you will, uh, uh, if you have them as an investor and uh, on the board, I think that will uh, help a lot in assuring the public that the decisions will be rational and not uh, will not include favoritism. Yes. So that's that's one of the items we put in there because we had anticipated precisely this kind of uh, uh, this kind of objection. So I, as I said, I don't have an exhaustive list of uh, yes, systemically right. impor important uh, industries, but certainly the ones I mentioned, the health industry, the tourism industry, and of course, uh, the transportation industry would be would need uh, uh, very much uh, support yes, in the you. recovery. Yes. yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, as uh, the author of uh, the guide in uh, the Senate, uh, you can count on our full support. Just by way of information, is it a LEDAC priority measure? Yes, ma'am. Yes, because uh, I don't think we have conducted as yet uh, too many hearings or uh, debates on the same. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We're all anxious to get to session. If there's anyone who'd like to follow, please uh, carry on. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, so only Senator Binay left, I think. So if Senator Binay wishes to have a second round, she can have it. Yeah, we'll just request some uh, information. No more, Senator Binay. Yeah. Very much. No more. No more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Aimi and Senator Binay. Uh, we'll just request send our requests for information uh, to the Secretary because uh, I think we'll be getting some questions perhaps on revenue projections, among other things, and the earlier uh, requests made by our members. Just to remind our Committee Secretary to follow those up with the respective uh, bureaus and agencies. So if there are no more uh, questions, we'll uh, suspend the hearing and recommend the budget of the DOF favorably to the plenary for plenary discussion. So thank you very much uh, to you. Secretary Sani, Commissioner Ray, Commissioner uh, uh, Dulai. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I'd like to request, although they don't get any subsidies anymore, we'd like to request for details on the budgets of the SEC and the IC, just to know uh, what's yes. going on. We know they're yes. uh, dependent already on uh, collect on their own internal uh, um, income, internal income. No? But nonetheless, yes. we'd like to also uh, know what's happening uh, in these thank agencies. Thank you. We will provide very the information. Uh, we will salamat, provide salamat, the Secretary. And thank you to all our officials who are present here. Uh, thank you. SEC, Insurance Commission. Thank you to our colleagues for uh, always uh, asking very good questions. Uh, Vice Chair Aimee, Senator Nancy. The ladies seem to be very active. Oh. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Secretary Sani, uh, Ezekiel, and the DOF uh, uh, family, Treasurer uh, De Leon, Commissioner Bellio, SEC, uh, Bill, GF uh, Director also. Salamat, salamat, Senor. Have a good afternoon. And uh, please be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. <laughs>